to give God some praise. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Yes. All right, then. Sorry, you may have your seats tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. God is good. At all the time. God is good. You know, uh, give an honor to the man of God in the house. Give an honor to Almighty God, who is the head of my life. Uh, you know, today when Prophet posted the flyer for tonight's program, he posted a caption under it saying, tonight is going to be fire. Amen. And it's very interesting because the word that I have for you tonight fire. is about fire. Yeah. Somebody shout fire. fire. Say it again, say fire. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Tonight I'm going to be talking to you on the subject, Restore My Fire. Somebody say, Restore. Okay, y'all don't sound too confident. Let's try this again. Say, Restore My Fire. Somebody say, Restore My Fire. Ah, Jesus. All right, I'm going to try to be as quick as possible tonight because time is far spent. But the presence of the Lord is in this house tonight. Oh my God. How, how many of you can feel the presence of the Lord tonight? Yes, yes. I mean, the presence is sick in this house. Yes, yes. My God, my God. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. I want to go into the scriptures in a few minutes, but I just want to share some things with you very quickly. Now, there is a myth that is going around in the body of Christ. And even in general, concerning men and women of God. Listen very carefully. And that myth is this, once you become an apostle, once you become a prophet, evangelist, pastor, bishop, elder, whatever the title you might have, whatever high office that you have in ministry, that you are exempt from problems. Hello. A lot of people think that because you have a, a high calling from God that you are suddenly a robot. Are you hearing me tonight? They put you on a pedestal and think that you are Superman or Superwoman. But even Superman has his kryptonite. Are you hearing me, somebody? You need to understand that pastors, prophets, they are humans just like us. Hello. The Bible says that Elijah was a man just like us. So some people think that because you are a pastor, you are a preacher, you, are, you have a great anointing, that nothing bad happens to you. That you don't go through anything. That you don't have problems in your family, you don't have problems in your marriage, you don't have problems in your finances. And then what, what happens is, when people then see, I hear stories of preachers falling, then all of a sudden we get on a bandwagon and we start criticizing them. And talking bad about them and posting negative things on your on your posts and, and videos on your posts and stuff like that but you gotta understand that we are humans just like anybody else right. come on somebody yes. you know we have to go to the bathroom just like anybody else we cry just like anybody else we hurt just like anybody else yeah. but because we have this thing that we put our passes high up there and we are down there that they cannot experience anything. Are you understanding me tonight? They suddenly forget that human beings, they are human beings, and that we are prone to failure. So we see things like when, when, um, when Jimmy Swigert fell, uh, when Jim Baker fell, and some others that we've heard about over the years, and we start to talk about them. We gotta be very careful because one of these days, the calling of God will be on your life just like them. And you will have you will understand what they are going through. Right. Don't think that because you are sitting down in those seats that one of these days God will not call you and tell you I'm sending you to the nations as an evangelist. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Amen. Okay, I only got about five people here with me tonight. Uh, when ministers do fall, they are heavily criticized both in and out of the church. Now, it's one thing for people outside of the church to criticize ministers of God. But it's another thing that when the criticism and the and abuse and the attack is coming from within. 
The worst kind of warfare is when it is coming from within. The worst kind of warfare, when we should be coming together to fight the enemy, but when the enemy is in the me. Oh, you're not hearing me tonight. When the enemy is within the ranks, when the enemy is in the, the, the leadership, when the enemy is in the, 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 the congregation, that's the worst kind of warfare that a man of God or a woman of God has to experience when it's coming from within. All right, we're gonna, I, I, it's gonna get good at the minutes. We need, what we need to understand tonight is ministers are people. We have emotions, we have struggles, we have trials, we have temptations, just like the people there are serving. The thing is, is that we cannot portray our weakness for the masses because of rank and position. One thing I have learned, and one thing I have understood, is that people do not care about what the man of God is going through. As long as they are coming and they are getting their breakthrough, as long as they are coming, they are expecting the man of God to pray for them and to deliver them and to set them free. But all the time, sometimes the man and the word of God, they too need deliverance. They too need help. They too need uh, uh, someone to, to pray for them. But they have to go higher. They cannot go lower. And one thing I have learned in ministry, you do not go lower for help. You go higher. I'm going somewhere with this, don't worry. I'm going somewhere with this. We're talking about the fire tonight. In order for a child of God to function effectively, there are three levels of baptism that they have to have. Three levels of baptism. I don't have time to go into it right now. But there's the baptism of water. Somebody say water. water. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say spirit. And the last one is the baptism of fire. Somebody say fire. fire. Uh, we don't really teach this in church, but I'm going to help you tonight. Very quickly, everybody knows about water baptism, right? Yes. When you give your hearts to God, you go to you, 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 you go to discipleship class or whatever, and the, and the pastor takes you to the river or to a pond or to a, to a pool or whatever, and, they, and you're declaring your confession that you have given your life to Christ, you've changed your life, and you dip you in water and comes out, which means signifying the burial of sin, and you're coming up a new person. That's water baptism. Then there is the next one, is the Holy Spirit. When Jesus was baptized in the river Jordan by John the Baptist, the Bible says that the heavens opened and that the Spirit of God came down in the form of a dove and lighted upon Jesus, and Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. But the Bible says, Jesus said, John, the baptism of John is which is the baptism of water. God, John baptized with water, but one is coming that is higher than me, that will baptize him with the Holy Ghost and of fire. Somebody say fire. fire. Now watch this. The baptism of the Holy Spirit only enables you to be effective as a child of God. But that is just entry level. What you need is the third one, which is the baptism of fire. And what the baptism of fire is, is that it ignites the fire. You understand that fire is a, a, a fuel that burns the fuel, which is the oil, which is the anointing of God upon your life, so you can effectively perform the assignment that God has given you to do. Yes. You cannot perform the ministry of God without the fire of God upon your life. Okay. I think I'm going too deep tonight. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Bible says, that Leviticus 6.13 says that the fire on the altar must never go out. But the problem is that many in the church have allowed their fire to go out. You have allowed your fire to go out. But the fire on the altar, the Bible says, must should never go out. The fire in the temple, the fire in this earthen vessel right here should never go out. You should always have fire because without the fire you cannot do what God has called you to do. The enemy is not afraid of you getting water baptized. That's right, that's right, amen. The enemy is not even afraid of you having the Holy Ghost. That's right. Because a lot of people just yeah. have the Holy Ghost and yeah. uh, speak in tongues. But yeah. people they speak in tongues in English in, in, to God, but they don't know how to speak in English to their neighbor. Okay, all right. You all miss me. You all don't like me tonight. 
A lot of you speak in tongues, but a lot of but the people that speak in tongues, that's just all it is, speaking in tongues. But after that, you still have a bad attitude, you're still rude, you're still mean, you're still fornicating, you're still adulterating, and all the nine yards and six inches. Can I talk to you tonight? Oh, I, uh, 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 uh. I come with fire tonight. Yes, yes. But what the enemy is afraid of is when you have the baptism of fire. Because when you have the fire of God, ain't no devil can stop you. Ain't no demon can stop you. When you have the fire of God, you are out, you're sold out for Christ. You're sold out for Jesus. And whatever God will do in your life, you will do it and the enemy is afraid of you. That's right. The enemy is scared of people who have fire. Somebody shot fire. Oh my God. Yandarabosha. Let me help you with some stuff. There are some ways that people can lose their fire. Some people have lost their fire because of doing things in flesh. I gave you my testimony some time ago about how I lost my fire. For those of you who were not here in 2012, I was a very successful uh, I consider myself very successful in ministry and, and in my personal life. I had a car, I had a good paying job, I had finances, I had a good music career going on, I had a good ministry going on at my church, I was a worship director at my church, I was also playing in a jazz group and traveling all over the Caribbean and all kinds of stuff like that. But what happened, I made a, I made a serious mistake. I married the wrong woman. And from the time that I married her, everything that I had went down. And I lost my anointing, lost my grace, lost everything. You've got to be very careful. You marry the wrong person. You have sex with the wrong man or woman. Uh oh. Can I go there tonight? Can I go there tonight? Yes. You're going to mess with people that you have no business dealing with. And then your anointing and your fire goes out. Throw cold water on it and extinguish it. Can okay, I go there tonight? Shakata. You make wrong decisions. You align yourself with the wrong church. That uh -oh. is so uh -oh. true. That okay. is so true. Alright, you don't like me tonight, prophet. You took the wrong career path. You did something that God told you not to do. And you lost your fire. Okay. Some people have lost their fire because they have lost their first love. Somebody say lost their first love. Revelation 2, 4, 5. Jesus told the Apostle John to write to the church of Ephesus and tell them this, that they have lost their first love. And if they do not repent and do the first works again, he said he will remove their candlestick. What makes a candle burn? Fire. Huh? Fire. Huh? Fire. Fire. Some people are beginning to lose their candlestick because they have lost their first love. You don't want to understand what it means by losing your first love. When you first gave your heart to God, you had a zeal for the things of God. You will be at the church from five o'clock in the morning. You will be there even when the church is locked. You will be you will want to do anything for the church. You will sweep the bathroom. You will clean the toilet. You don't care what people say about you. You're always at church. You know ask you what's wrong with you. And you have the fire and the zeal of God to do the things of God. But all of a sudden, life hits you. Ah, uh, situations hit you. And all of a sudden, no, the pastor can't find you when they want you. Oh, it's time for church. Oh, I, I, I got to work. I got to work today. You don't got to work. You don't got to, you don't got to, to work. You're telling that he's in the, in the presence of God. What's happened? You've lost your fire. You've lost your first love. The seal that you have for God is gone to the elders. Can I talk to somebody here tonight? Yes. But I, I, I'm, I'm here to prophesy to you tonight that any person in this house that has lost their fire, it shall be restored tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Can somebody talk to me up in this house tonight? Can somebody give God a praise tonight? Somebody's about to get their fire back tonight. In the name of Jesus. Can somebody give God a praise tonight? 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 Can somebody give God a praise ton
my God. Hallelujah. Somebody give God a praise. The next thing I want to tell you is this. The warfare that you encounter in your life may more have to do with who you are more so than what you did. Come on now. I love this. Are you Amen. hearing me? Yes. Yes. Sometimes the warfare that you are encountering in your life is not nothing to do with demons. It has nothing to do with people. It has to do with your calling. Oh, yeah. Because the higher your calling, come on, talk to me, somebody, the higher the, the, the warfare in your life. Don't expect to be called to a higher calling and don't have no warfare in your life. Come on now, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Amen. It's not always what you did that can cause your fire to be in jeopardy. It is the call of God on your life that attracts enemies of your fire. Your fire can attract enemies. Come on, talk to me, somebody. The major spirit, and this is where I'm going to, that attacks prophetic people and prophetic churches is a spirit called Jezebel. Somebody say Jezebel. Jezebel. What does she do? She seeks to destroy the prophetic because it is a threat to her reign. The Bible says that Jezebel, uh, in the book of First Kings, and I don't have time to go into all the details, but the Bible says that Jezebel, she, she, she initiated Israel into the worship of Baal and Astaroth. And another thing that she did is that she, she took it upon herself to kill all of the prophets of God that were alive at that time. So much so that a man named Obadiah had to take a hundred prophets and feed them with bread and water and hide them in the cave. Jezebel always seeks to destroy the prophetic. Whenever you are in a prophetic church, watch out for Jezebel. The manipulating spirit. And it's not a woman, so don't think it's a woman because there are men that can be Jezebels. Oh, you hear me? They like to control, they like to manipulate, they like to, 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 to put on their business on, and everybody trying to steer the church in a direction that God doesn't want it to go. My God. So anytime you are about to rise in ministry, look out for Jezebel. Anytime that you're about to rise in the anointing, watch out for the spirit of Jezebel. My God. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings 19. First scripture. I want to show you something very quickly. We're going to talk about a mighty man of God that almost lost his fire. We're going to talk about the prophet Elijah. Somebody say Elijah. Elijah. Uh, we all know Elijah. We all know the story. Elijah, the prophet of God, who called out fire from heaven. Yes, yes. Come on. Yes. And destroyed the altar of Baal. Yes. Come on. In a, uh, he, he destroyed the altars of Baal and called down fire from heaven and the people saw the manifestation of fire yeah. before he prayed for the rain to fall upon the earth again. You all know the story, you don't have to go through all the details. And he killed 850 prophets, 400 prophets of Baal and 450 prophets of the throne. 850 prophets, read your Bible. Yes, amen, amen. First Kings 19. You get it on the screen, I would... Pull it up here on my phone. Press for time tonight. First Kings 19, and I'm going from verse 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. That's where he was, that's what he called up the fire and killed up the prophets in the last chapter. And with all he had slain the prophets with the sword. Verse 2. Then Jezebel, somebody say Jezebel. Sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Now, when he saw that, he arose and went for his life. Wait, hold a minute. So, in chapter 18, we have the man of God standing up against four 850 prophets of Baal, false prophets called down fire and people saw the fire come down and consumed the sacrifice brought the people back to God and in the next chapter one woman makes a threat and he's running for his life what happened? he lost his fire 
Fear and depression can cause you to lose your fire. Being overwhelmed by the ministry that God has called you to be can cause you to lose your fire. Be very careful. Be very careful. Don't allow anyone, anything, or any situation cause you to lose your fire. That's why we've been praying tonight. Because prayer is a, is a fuel that ignites and keeps your fire burning. That keeps that fire going. If you don't pray, you're going to lose what God has given to you. You've got to keep in prayer. You've got to keep in worship. You've got to keep in the will of God and let that fire not go out. Are you understanding me in here tonight? Verse 3, what's this? And when he saw that he when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. Another thing that can cause you to lose your fire is when you begin to isolate yourself. He left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, came un, came and sat down under a juniper tree. And requested for himself that he might die. Oh my, he's getting suicidal now. He's thinking about, he wants to die. And he said, it is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. My God. This is the, this is the same Elijah that called on fire from heaven. And now he wants to die. And as he lay there and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baked on the coals and a cruise of water at his head, and he eat and and he did eat and drink and laid him down again. Then the angel touched him a second time and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great. Let me skip down a bit. Number nine. And he came thither unto a cave, and lodged there, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, What are you doing here, Elijah? Look at your neighbor and ask them, what are you doing here? Touch your neighbor and ask them, what are you doing here? Understand what God was telling Elijah. He was not talking about a physical location. He was talking about a spiritual position. What are you doing here? How did you get into this place? How did you get yourself in this situation? I anointed you with the fire of God. I anointed you to be a mighty apostle, to be a mighty evangelist, to be a mighty intercessor, to be a mighty worship leader, and all of a sudden you are lost tonight. Where did you get to this place? What are you doing here? Some of you didn't want to backslide, you want to leave the church because the pressure is too great. What are you doing here? My God. My God. Verse 10. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, slain thy prophets, and I, even I, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. Alright, let, let me skip down. Now, this is what the Lord said to him. Verse 15. And the Lord said to him, Go and return thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazael to be king of Assyria, and Jehu the son of Nimshi, anoint as king of Israel, and Elijah the son of Shephat, shall you anoint to be prophet in thy place. And it shall come to pass that him that escaped the sword of Hazael shall Jehu slay, him that escaped from the sword of Jehu shall Elijah slay. Yet I have left me seven thousand in Israel. All the knees which have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth which have not kissed him. Listen, let us somebody say you're not alone. You are not alone. Understand what I'm saying tonight. Elijah said to God that I am the only one that is left that is worshipping you. That is not true. A lot of people think that because that you're going through situations and trials, that you are the only person that's going through. Every person in here is going to do something one way or the other. Follow me. Yes. Okay. Everybody's going to do something. 
They might not tell you what they're going through, but trust me, they're going through. And don't think that your situation is so bad. Some, the person that's sitting next to you might be way worse than you, but they have a smile on your face. They have a joy in your heart because they understand God and they have a fire in their soul. But you, you have allowed the fire to go out and you're coming in the church and looking as if you drank, um, saw a lemon juice or something. Your face is set up like you swallowed and saw a lemon juice. Come and talk to me ever here. You, 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 no time to be to be sad. This is no time to be to be to be to feel down and out. This is the time for you to do what God has called you to do. Yes, yes, yes. Like the man of God said tonight, we've got to learn to pray. When you learn to pray, you does there some things that in your life will shake off of you. When you're feeling down, pray. When you're feeling low, pray. When you're feeling depressed, pray. Yes, yes. Prayer is a weapon that will ignite your fire. Yes, Lord. Somebody said, restore my fire. Restore my fire tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something. When God, and I'm so closing, when God is ready to restore your fire, your fire is going to be greater than what you had before. The Bible says that when Job lost everything, the, man, the Bible said that the Lord restored Job after he prayed for his friends. Ah, you understand. God gave Elijah an instruction and he followed the instruction. Sometimes when you lose your fire, you have to do some sort of instruction from God to get you back. The Bible says that God told Job to pray for his friends that betrayed him and the Lord restored him double, two times what he had lost in the first place. When you lose your fire and you do what God has called you to do to restore your fire, your fire will become greater than what you have before. Yes. I'm going to prove it to you. 2 Kings chapter 1. Turn to 2 Kings chapter 1. I want to show you. I love this story. I love this story. My God. Look what it says. Then Moab, from verse 1, 2 Kings chapter 1, verse 1. Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. And Ahaziah, no, the Ahaziah is the son of King Ahab, okay, fell down to a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick. And he sent messengers and said, Go unto them, and said unto them, Go inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of the disease. So he's going to a witch doctor to find out if he's going to recover from this disease. My God. Uh, but the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, somebody say Elijah, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say unto them, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that you go and inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which you are gone up, but you shall surely die. And Elijah departed. Watch this. And when the messengers turned back to him and said, Where are you going? Very quick. Why say all the woman? You all get by here very fast. Be your language. And they said to him, verse 6, There came a man up to meet us, and said unto us, Go turn unto the king and sent you, and say to them, Thus saith the Lord, Is it not because there is a God of Israel that you sent to inquire of Beelzebub? Therefore you shall not come down from that bed, but you shall surely die. And the king said to him, what kind of man is this that comes up to meet you and tell you these words? And they answered him, He was a hairy man, girl with a girl of leather about his loins. And, he, and the king said, Elijah. Watch this. Now this is where it gets funny. Then the king, verse 9, sent unto him a captain of 50 with his 50. And he went out to him, and behold, he sat on top of a hill. <laughs> My God. When you lose your fire and you regain your fire, watch this. You have more confidence now than what you had before. Yes, Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 19 was in 18. When he called up fire for heaven, he was standing on the hill. Now we come to this scripture. He is sitting on the hill. Amen. Chilling. Watch this, he's chilling. 
and he spake unto him, Thou man of God, the king says to come down. Watch this. And Elijah answered and said to the captain of 50, If I be a man of God, let the fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50. And there came no fire from heaven and consume him and his 50. Yes, yes. Somebody shot one. Wow. Number 11. Again also he said unto him another captain of 50 with his 50. So the fire destroyed this first set of 50. So the king decided to try it again. With another captain of 50. And he answered and said unto him, that time the man of God is still sitting down on the hill. He ain't moved for his position yet, you know. Oh, man of God, thus the king said, Come down quickly. And Elijah answered and said unto them, If I be a man of God, let fire come down and consume you and your fifty. Come! Somebody shout two. <laughs> My God, this is so funny. And verse 13. And then this, and the king, king, this man ain't getting a little taller, 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 taller. He sent one set of fifty. Fire come down, destroy them. Set another set of fifty. Fire come down, destroy them. And the king is so stupid. Now you can try it again a third time. Then he sent again a captain of the third fifty with his fifty. And the third captain of the fifty went up. No, I like this man, right? He went, he fell on his knees before Elijah and besought him, O oh man of God, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these fifteen be precious and thy sight. In other words, he came to Elijah and said, Oh, no, 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 no let my life now be precious in thy sight. Just, just, just come quick. Just come quietly with us, please. Just, just, please don't kill me. Please don't put them down. I don't want no more fire. <laughs> and the angels of the Lord said unto Elijah, Go down with him. Be not afraid of him. And he arose and went down with him unto the king. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord, For as much as you sent messengers to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron, it is not because there is no God in Israel to inquire of his word. Therefore you shall not come down off that bed on which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. So he died according to the word of the Lord, which Elijah had spoken. Come on, talk to me somebody. Yes, amen. The man of God called on fire from heaven. How many times? Two times. It could have been three. It could have been four. It could have been five. What am I saying? The, 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 the time that he called on fire was not the only time that, that Elijah called on fire from heaven. No, Carmel was not the only time that Elijah called on fire from heaven. But the one is so significant about this one is that because he had restored his fire, he could call on fire 200 times and nothing will happen and, and his enemies will be destroyed. What am I saying tonight? All of you that lost your fire, God is going to restore your fire to such a degree that when you get your fire, that the fire will not go out. And you can call on fire upon your enemies. You will call on fire upon your, those situations. You will call on fire. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Open your enemies tonight in the name of Jesus. Some of you tonight, you have lost your fire. Some of you have lost your anointing. Some of you have lost your grace because of sin, because of fear, or because of depression. Come on, talk to me. I remember the man of God in Jeremiah. The Bible says Jeremiah was a man of God who was called to come and talk to me, somebody. Can I preach tonight? He was called before his mother's womb, before he was formed in his mother's womb, and said, I have ordained you, I have called you to be a prophet to the nations, but going turn it down in the scriptures, the Bible said Elijah, that Jeremiah said, oh my God, you have deceived me, you have deceived me, God, ah, I, I, I don't like what is happening to me, you have given me all these prophecies of doom and gloom, you have given me all these prophecies, and all I am getting is lashes, all I am getting is licks, they are throwing me in prison, they are taking away my properties, they are, they are beating me with stripes, I said, God, I am done with this. I will no longer preach the word of God. I will no longer prophesy your name. But the Bible says that the word of God was in Jeremiah like a fire. Shut up in his bones. He could not keep quiet. He could not keep quiet. 
some of you in here tonight, some of you want to lose your fire, some of you want to backslide, some of you want to go back in the world because you can't handle what the, the situation, you can't handle the trial, you can't handle the temptation, but the devil is a liar tonight. I decree tonight that the fire will never go out. I decree the fire shall be in you like a fire shut up in, the, in your bones tonight. God says I'm going to restore your fire tonight. Yes. Somebody say restore my fire tonight. Restore my fire tonight. Restore my fire tonight. Restore my fire tonight. Somebody shout fire tonight. Fire, fire tonight. Fire. Fire. Tonight. Fire. 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 Restore my fire. Restore my fire. In the name of Jesus, come on, stand to your feet. Jesus. Oh my God, God is about to move in this place tonight. Makatala bando loko sa rebanda basata. Lift your hands tonight. Lift your hands tonight. Some of you need to restore some fire. Some of you have gone cold. Some of you have gone still. But God says tonight, I am restoring your fire tonight. I am restoring your fire. Your fire, the, the, the word of God shall be in you. Like the word of God will be in you. Like a fire shut up in your bones tonight. You will not backslide. You will not go back out. You will not lose. You will not die. You will not kill yourself. You will not commit suicide, but the fire of God is going to prepare you to do the works of God. You are going to ignite your fire tonight in the name of Jesus tonight. In the name of Jesus, come on, put your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. My God, tonight. Somebody say tonight. Somebody say tonight. Say, Lord, if I have done anything, or if I, yeah, if I have said anything that caused me to lose my fire, I repent in the name of Jesus. We're going to start right there. We're going to repent. Lord, if there's anything that I have done, if there's anything that I have said that will cause me to lose my fire, I repent now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, come on, open your mouth and begin to pray. We're gonna pray right now. Lord, if there's anything in me, anything that I have done, anything that I have said that will cause me to lose my fire. God, I don't want to be like Jeremiah that said I'm done with your work. God, I don't want to, to lose out because I said I, I'm finished. Because I want to quit. Uh, God, don't allow me to quit. God, I repent for every word I've said that will cause me to lose my fire. That will cause me to lose my grace. That will cause me to lose my anointing. That will cause me to lose my vision. That will cause me to lose my purpose. In the name of Jesus, I repent right now tonight for everything that I have said that will cause me to lose my fire tonight. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, anything that I have done, uh, any person that I have dealt with that will cause me to lose my fire, any person that I would have slept with that caused me to lose my fire, any career decision that I have made that caused me to lose my fire, pray, pray, some of you need to need, need restoration of fire tonight, I repent from everything that I have done, wrong decisions, wrong decisions, Wrong spouse. Shakataba. Messing with people that I are not supposed to mess with. My God. Illicit relationships cause you to lose your fire. My God. Wrong decisions will cause you to lose your fire. Being disobedient to what God told you to do will cause you to lose your fire. Makatala Basata. Saul lost his fire because he was disobedient. And did not follow the instructions of the prophet Samuel. He lost his fire. God do not allow me to lose my fire. Because of wrong decisions. God told you not to take that job. But you wanted the money so you took that job. And that job was, took you out of the will of God. My God. I repent tonight. I repent tonight. I repent tonight. For everything and everything I've said or done that will cause me to lose my fire. Pray tonight, pray. My God. Shakatada. With fire, we're done. We start there. 
Shakatata. Bakata, I repent tonight. I repent tonight. I repent tonight. Anything that I have done, anything I've said that will cause me to lose my fire. I repent tonight. I am sorry, Lord. God, I am sorry, Father God. God, you've called me to this work. You've called me to this thing. God, if you've called me, Father God, you will equip me, Father. If you've called me to this ministry, you will equip me, Father God. If you've given me the vision, you will give the provision. God, I repent tonight. Are you serious about God? Are you serious about the work of God? Are you serious about what God has called you to do? Lavasata. In this month of December, don't let me do anything that will cause me to lose my fire. Don't let me get caught up in the Christmas festivities that will cause me to lose my fire. Yes, yes, my God. yes. Sanabanda Tikenda. Shakata. Don't cause me to lose to lose my fire tonight, Sanabanda. My God, my God. Sika, we can't do. Moshanda ba, we can't do kumba ka. We can't do yisunda ba ya. We can't do kumba na ba. We can't do kumba na la sa. I repent tonight. I repent. I repent. I repent. La ba ka ta 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 ta. Shanda ra ba 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 sa ta. Ah la ba sa. In the name of Jesus. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Say this, say, Lord, any fire that I have lost, Lord, any fire that I have lost restore in the name of Jesus. Restore in the name of Jesus. Come on. Some of you had some of you had a zeal for God. Some of you had a passion for God. When you gave your heart to God, every day you were at the church. You, were, you wanted to do things for the pastor. You wanted to do things for God. You wanted to preach. Even if you couldn't preach. You wanted to lead worship, even if you couldn't sing. Come on. All of a sudden now, you've gone through some trials or situations. Now the pastor can't find you. You block them. You block them off. You block all your church friends off on your own WhatsApp and everything. Nobody can get hold of you. You can't. You don't see what church like like one time. You go church here in one day, then the next week you don't see them, and then the next week you don't see them, and then the next two weeks you see them, and then three weeks again you don't see them again, and all of that kind of thing. You've lost your fire. The passion you have for the things of God. Yes, you're a minister, you're a pastor, you're an evangelist, you're a preacher. Yes. You're afraid be you're afraid of what people will say about you. You lose your fire. Like Jeremiah, say, Lord, tonight, Lord, tonight. if I have lost any fire, have restore have it restore in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. As, I As I clap my hands and pray tonight, restore my fire. 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 In the name of Jesus. Restore my fire. Restore my fire. My fire for preaching. My fire for prayer. My fire for reading the word. The fire for attending church. The fire to do the work of God. Restore my fire tonight. In the name of Jesus. Restore my fire. Restore my fire. We cannot stand there. Restore my fire. Restore my fire. I will not be who called. The Bible says, God told the church in the book of Revelation, you are already hot or cold. But if you're who called, I will speak you out my mouth. God will not speak you out my mouth. God will be burning for you. I want to be tried by fire. Purified. I want to be tried by fire. Purified tonight. Start to find me a fire. Give me your fire tonight. It cannot be sent to her. Fire tonight. Restore my fire. Restore my fire tonight. Restore my fire tonight. Restore my fire. Pray. Shakata. Give me the passion I have that I want to have for you. Take me back to my first love. Ikataba. God, I want you to remove my candlestick. Restore my fire tonight. Come on, you gotta get more desperate than that. Come on, clap your hands and pray. Yeah, 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 come on. Enter into the spirit world tonight. Ma, 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 ma. 
Restore my fire. Restore my fire. Restore my fire. Ah, ya ta 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 mo ta ba. Restore my fire. Restore my fire. Restore my fire. Restore my anointing. Restore my passion. Restore my zeal. Restore my fire tonight. Restore my fire tonight. Restore my fire tonight. In the name of Jesus. Restore my fire tonight. In the name of Jesus. Shaka ta 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 ta. Ignite my ministry. Ignite my anointing. Ignite my grace. Ignite my calling. Ignite my ministry. Ignite my calling. Ignite my grace tonight. Restore my fire. Restore my fire. Restore my fire. Restore, restore, restore. Kitala Putaba. Putaba Kataya. Linda Nada Dada Shata. Come on and pray tonight. Restore my fire. Ah, the Holy Ghost is moving. The Holy Ghost is moving. The Holy Ghost is moving. Fire is going to be restored some tonight. So fire is going to be restored tonight. Somebody fire is being restored tonight. Somebody fire is being restored tonight. Fire tonight. Last prayer point, I'm, I'm done. Somebody say, every Jezebel spirit, seek it to snatch my fire. Be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Oh my God, my God, my God, oh my God. Some of you got some people that are smashing your fire. So the people that you are around you are some Jezebels, and some I houses some at the light. They're, they're just coming to snatch your fire. Sometimes you gotta distance yourself from some people in your life. Because when you are around some people, it will cause you to lose your fire. You gotta distance yourself from some people. You gotta distance yourself from some friends. You gotta distance yourself from even some church members. But it will cause you to lose your fire. Yes, amen. Shaka, ta, 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 ta. Yes. You work every tonight. You work every tonight. You work every tonight. Tonight is the tonight is the night that you're gonna go into your contacts and you're gonna do some delete. Block and 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 delete. I'm prophesying to somebody tonight. Block and delete. Block and delete. There are some people in your life. They are causing you to lose your fire. They are not good for your spirit. They are not good for your soul. They are not even good for your body either. You don't hear me tonight. Every Jezebel, somebody say, every Jezebel spirit. That is thinking to snatch my fire. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. As I clap my hands and pray, every Jezebel, I can see to have praises. Tonight in the name of Jesus, every Jezebel, remove every Jezebel out of my life. In the name of Jesus, every Jezebel, every Jezebel spirit. Ah, you're welcome. Please destroy tonight. In the name of Jesus, every Jezebel, seek to destroy my fire. Be the strong in the name. Come on, open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray tonight. There are some people that you need to get rid of in your life. There are some people, there are some enemies of your fire. There are some enemies of your destiny. There are some enemies of your soul. There's the enemies of your peace. There's the enemies of your prosperity. There's the enemies of your going out and your coming in. Oh my God. Ah, ya kata. Ah, ya kuna na mata. Fire! Ya kata. Any test of that spirit. 
and me says the devil. Speak this against prayer, my prayer. Be just prayer in the name of Jesus. That's fire in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Look at the Pushaba. Yes, I'm not going to buy out. Every sister, come on, pray. Stand on your feet and pray. Come on, stand up. Come on, this is serious. 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 Every chance about Come on, Amen. Amen. I want us to do this real quickly. If you are here and you know you have lost your fire, come forward. Come forward. Come forward. Certain experience you used to have, you no longer have it. You had an encounter with a woman or a man, and you can feel like something has come out of you. Something has happened to you. Yes. From that moment, your life is turning upside down.